Now, welcome back to Speak for Yourself, the most fearless show in sports. Jason Whitlock, Marcellus Wiley, joined again by LeVar Arrington and Rick Buecher. Time now for the most fearless discussion of the day. Let's return to the Gail King, Snoop Dogg, Kobe Bryant controversy. Yesterday on this show, I offered the opinion that King and Snoop could find common ground if they both channeled the positive, classy energy Kobe Bryant tapped into post-retirement. Gail King and Snoop Dogg form a real-life version of the meme that has two Spider-Men pointing accusatory fingers at each other. Here's what's even more ironic. Kobe Bryant provides a blueprint for the solution. Kobe Bryant embraced the responsibility of being a role model and carrying himself in a manner that brought respect to himself and black men. Right now, all parties, at best, look like hypocritical clout chasers. All right, Marcel has posted my full commentary on his Instagram page, and Snoop posted an interesting and positive response, saying, quote, we good, cuz. I'm grown. I know how to handle all my misunderstandings. I appreciate y'all but hit me next time to get my full perspective. Remember what's the focus, the legacy of Kobe Bryant, my friend and family member, peace and love. I legitimately believe Snoop's intentions were and are positive. He founded the SYFL, Snoop Youth Football League, a league similar to the one we celebrated Super Bowl week in Miami, run by rapper Luther Campbell. Snoop has a sincere passion for developing young men. His style of rap music contradicts and mutes that passion, but it does not eliminate his desire to be a force for good. I think, and I could be wrong here, but I think Snoop would like to publicly apologize to Gayle King and challenge her to use her platform to uplift black boys and men. But he's trapped by the rap music brand that made him rich and famous. Gangster rappers, even old ones, who are friends with Martha Stewart and make gospel music, don't apologize for their transgressions. It's too risky. It opens too many other questions, such as, in this case, are you using your platform to uplift black boys and men? Brand is an enemy of humanity. Brand benefits corporations and inhibits human ev evolution. Allegiance to brand is stopping Gail King and Snoop Dogg from aligning together to work for the good of their people. All right, Marcel, let's get us rolling here. You think Snoop's brand is preventing him from publicly apologizing to Gail King. No, I don't think it's because of his brand. Um, I don't know a celebrity that has more latitude in terms of their brand than Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. Man, let's, let's do it. Th th I met Snoop Dogg through my headphones on Slauson and Normandy when I was listening to Deep Cover for the first time. And I was like, I live vicariously through gangster rap at that age, not impressionable by the lyrics, but just like, oh, these are my circumstances, but that's how you chose to deal with them. So a gangster rapper who has a cooking show now with Martha Stewart that is DJing gospel rapping and that would teach your kids how to tackle. Don't forget it, reggae. And reggae is not a guy that is, like, restricted by brand. I will say that. But um, I'm not into the to the conversation of telling someone to, to say sorry, because I think it robs them of the potential sincerity that you need to come to that place yourself. So I don't know if Snoop, and I don't know if a lot of people from not only our culture, but our subculture, respects the two reasons I've learned to say sorry. And growing up, I only knew one. The only reason I said sorry growing up is because I was wrong. But then I got older and more mature and saw more and experienced more and realized that you also can say sorry if you make someone feel bad, mm. if you just contributed in any regard to them not feeling at their best. And now I incorporate those two, but I'm not going to force Snoop to get to that place because Snoop has to arrive there himself and he has to feel that conviction. Maybe he doesn't feel like he wronged her or that she should feel wronged by what he said because he spoke his truth. Right. And what is his truth? This is the thing that I don't know if a lot of people are talking about, but this is the issue with the Kobe Bryant situation, why it's so much going on with it. One, people don't want Snoop to disrespect Gail because he felt that she disrespected Kobe's legacy. You don't fight fire with fire. But Snoop is like, yo, I'm defending Kobe Bryant's name because it wasn't properly litigated post-trial. His name was drugged through the mud without really a counterbalance in those moments. And let's talk about those moments. The evidence report suggested that maybe she stopped short of going through the trial and he wasn't convicted. Not only not convicted, but innocent. But not only that, maybe falsely accused. So, Cole, so you got Snoop sitting there saying, my man 
may have been falsely accused, and we are now going to litigate this. We didn't do it when he was alive. We didn't do it post-trial. And now we're going to do it when he doesn't have a defense because he's gone. Yeah. And that's where I think all the energy is coming from. I'm not saying that Snoop needs to apologize. I just don't like calling people out their name when you disagree. But uh, before you go, Rick, I, you've made a hell of a point because a lot of people... I've had deep conversations with Ray Lewis. Oh, my man. With Ray Lewis. Saw him Friday and with I have, Snoop. I saw him and Snoop together on Friday. I have a deep understanding from Ray's perspective of what happened in Atlanta. Say it. And he's convinced me, like, oh. Mm-hmm. People are out here acting and reacting to bad information and don't really know what's going on. And I, that same feeling that Snoop may have about Kobe, I have about Ray Lewis. And I saw Ray Lewis the night that all went down, White Mink. I was with Ray Lewis that night, but don't... Let's yeah. not go there, but that's yeah. the point. I know exactly where you're coming from. So, yeah, I believe that Snoop has apologized. He just did it through you. He wasn't doing it directly to Gail, but his saying that there were misunderstandings, he's already recategorizing what went on between him and Gail, that there was a misunderstanding of what she was saying and what he was saying. Well, so he mistook why she said what she said or why she asked the question and what her intention was. And so that, and I, and that makes sense to me. Sometimes we can't go directly and apologize to someone, but I'm going to say, you know what? Mm. I feel really bad about what I said to LeVar. Mm. Knowing that LeVar is going to find out that what I said, that I feel badly about it, and I feel that there was a, a, a misunderstanding there. I'm 100% I'm with you. I don't think his brand gets in the way because he's a game show host. He's <laughs> yeah. on a cooking channel. Like, he doesn't have to defend that rap status, but there's also a matter of, like, it's, this is very much a divided issue still there are people that feel like what snoop said there was just there was merit in what he said and on the other hand no merit that he in the went, way he said it but i get but he went saying. too far yeah. mm -hmm. but then there are people are saying that he ultimately went too far and he attacked gail and just as a distinction regardless of how it went down to ask the question of that that incident affecting kobe's legacy whether he was completely innocent or whatever it was, the fact of the matter is that it was something that happened, and how do you resolve that with everything else that we've seen Kobe become? That's still something that merits being asked when we look at the fullness of how we think of Kobe Bryant. Mm. Yeah, I don't think his brand <clears throat> impacts him wanting to issue an apology, and I think some of the information, I, I guess, in terms of the wound is still very open and it's very fresh on what took place. And I don't think that that has even been really discussed in the whole, mm. you know, entirety of the conversation. If there were one thing that I would look at, and you touched on it, if there were one thing I'd look at and say, just from my dealings and knowing who Snoop is, knowing that he's a, he's a dope influential leader to our young guys, I mean, being a coach at Long Beach, seeing him and how he interacts with, with the guys and the respect level, him being a granddad at this point, not just a dad, but being a granddad, it would probably have been the way that he presented it, the presentation of what he said. If there would be anything that I'd look at, and if me and Snoop was rapping right now, I'd be like, do you regret possibly the way, you know, we coming for you or calling her out of her name in, in a disrespectful manner? Would you, would you apologize? Would you have felt some way about that? Knowing the type of person he is, 100%, that would be the one thing. Mm. But let's not get out of context, right? The context of his message still remains. That's not what he would be apologizing. To me, this is my interpretation, I don't think he would be apologizing for what he said. It's how he said it. No question. But it would certainly be how, and, some of the things that he presented and how he said it. And I, trying to walk a fine line, have defended the intent behind his message because I do think there need to be some challenges issued that direction. Mm. And, and if he had... if And you know what? I can't even... I'm going to criticize and say if he had said it a different way, we would be having that discussion. But we actually are having that having discussion. That discussion. Yeah, we are. And it's yeah. because... Because I'm just telling you, you... The point you made has blown me away because I'm telling you, if when people say crazy things about Ray Lewis, I get emotional. Uh-huh. 
And behind the I bell. Yeah, because I have... Yeah. One, I know what he does in the Baltimore community. I know where his heart really is. And it's like, no, no, I don't really think you understand the situation. And so I can see where Snoop is coming from. But I, I said this over social media yesterday. We have to figure out a way, particularly as black people and black men and women, to engage, disagree, and find a way to common ground and be respectful towards you each other. You know what? There was a, a woman, Rice, that, Susan that Rice came back and threatened Snoop, and I don't. And I, I don't, get why she did it. I, I don't. I, I, I get Same it. Reasons why. I, but again, I will defend Ray Lewis. It was no. But Kobe. there's no. There's no real differentiator in how outraged she was and mm -hmm. how she came at Snoop mm -hmm. and how Ray outraged Snoop was because of how they came at Kobe. So to me, what you're saying has so much merit and validity to it because. Can we communicate better than that? Like, why would Rice come out and say what she said? Nobody's... I don't see it, people jumping up in arms like, can you believe she said we got an army and you'll lose, Snoop? Like, yeah. th you're, you're turning it into a whole nother set of issues yeah. coming out of one singular issue that could have been resolved with one singular conversation. And the pendulum of ethics continues to swing, and that's why it's so important to get to the second level of apology, because it... When you make someone feel bad, when you call someone out their name, it's okay to say, I'm sorry. When you call me or Whitlock or Uncle Tom a sellout just because you disagree about our stance on any issue that affects our community, then you are not enlightened fully. So I'm going to help you because we see the lack of understanding and empathy that happens. Gail King to Kobe's legacy. We thought that that was not sensitive. Then Snoop responds with the fire to that fire and goes at Gail King, and then the pendulum of ethics continues to swing. Here's one thing I want everyone to know, and I'm going to stay behind the veil with this. Snoop and a many other per person out there, people out there are saying that we have seen black men killed over false accusation. This is what they're saying. And Kobe is dead. Don't kill his name and honor over false accusation. And then they go dot, dot, dot. Because, sister, you should know better. And we didn't have a proper form and a proper platform to discuss Kobe and counterbalance post-Colorado. People ran into their factions. Either quietly you believe, hey, Kobe didn't do that. And the evidence reports can support that. And then other people were public and chanting and saying, you know what? Kobe did that. Why would you settle? Why would you pay? Why would you make the apology? But in reality, it's a blend of those things that can come together in a mature way without always taking to name-calling and also other demeaning ways to not hear that full point. All right, coming up, a former NFL great is coming after our guy Michael Strahan's sack record. We tell you what's really going on. Next.